Question number 10. This is again a very straightforward, not very straightforward, but one who has done with those numericals can very easily proceed with this. A moving coil galvanometer has 50 turns. So number of turns has been given. That's there. Apart from that, each turn has an area. So let me make the variable there. The area A has also been given. The magnetic field produced by the magnet, the B, the magnetic field has also been given. The torsional constant of the suspension wire that is given here. So let me represent the torsional constant by C. When a current flows through the galvanometer, a full scale deflection occurs if the coil rotates by 0 0.2 radian. So that is the maximum deflection. The resistance of the coil of galvanometer has also been given. So here, this is R. Do not worry, there are so many different terms, but that's going to be eliminated very easily. This galvanometer is to be converted into an ammeter capable of measuring current in the range of this 0 to 1 ampere. That means we need to convert this galvanometer into higher order ammeter. And we know for this, a shunt has to be connected in parallel. So we need to calculate the value of shunt. And this shunt resistance has to be calculated in ohm. So here, first of all, see, during maximum deflection, the magnetic torque is going to be m b sine 90 that's m cross b and that torque will be balanced by the spring torque the regular format and this magnetic moment has to be written as n i a b equals to c times theta now theta max is given so that will be the current max the range of the galvanometer in fact, every data has been given. The number of turn has been given. The area has been given. B has been given. C has been given. This in radian has been given. And you calculate the value of I max is going to be 0 0.1 ampere. All right, so that is the calculation. Now, this galvanometer has a resistance of 50 ohm. And we need to convert it into uh, ammeter, which will be able to measure a maximum current of 1 ampere. So here, the situation would be something like this. This is the galvanometer with resistance 50 ohm. And the deflection maximum is 0 0.1 ampere. For that, I need to connect a shunt if I need to convert it into 1 ampere amp meter range. In other words, this will be 0 0.9 ampere. And this is the shunt and the resistance of the shunt that has been asked. So they are in parallel, which is a straightforward one. 0.1 into 50 is equal to shunt multiplied by 0 0.9. And when you calculate this and round off, this is quite a simple one. That will be 5.56 ohm. And 5.56 ohm is the value of shunt that has to be connected in parallel. The answer was axed in ohm, so the correct answer for this would be 5.56. So there were multiple variables, but the pattern was very straightforward. Should we go to the next question then? All right, let's go to question number 11. The question number 11 is from the, again, experimental physics where JE has stood up to its expectation. Steel wire of diameter 0 0.5 millimeter has been given. So this is D. And the Young's modulus has also been given. That's Y. Carries a load of mass M. And the length of the wire with the load is this much. That means the original length plus the elongation is 1 meter. Vernier scale with 10 divisions is attached to the end of this wire. Next to the steel wire is a reference wire to which a main scale of least count, one millimeter, is attached. So from this particular data, we can say least count is 0 0.1 millimeter, least count of the vernier caliper. And after that, the next statement it says is the 
zero of the vernier coincides with the zero of the mean. In other words, there is no zero error. Now it says if the load on the steel wire is increased by 1.2 kg, additional load has been increased, the vernier scale division which coincides with the main scale division is this. Effectively the idea is when additional load of 1.2 kg has been added, we'll try to find the elongation and we'll see how that elongation is measured by the vernier caliper. So the question is effectively very straightforward and that question now comes out to be this. Young's modulus is F by E delta L divided by L. That's how it goes. Now here's the Young's modulus. F is the additional force 1.2 kg. The length is given 1 meter. The cross-sectional area can be calculated pi d square by 4. And when this is done, you'll get delta L as 0 0.3 millimeter. Now, after that, this particular elongation has to be seen in terms of the vernier scale division which coincides with the mean. So, right here, the zero of the vernier would be between zero of mean and first of mean that you can easily imagine. So, the direct reading would be number of vernier scale coinciding multiplied by least count is going to be 0 0.3. This is 0 0.1. So, therefore, the value of n has to be equals to 3. So, the correct option for question number 11, I should not say option, but the correct answer would be 3 or more precisely 3.00. Let's move to question number 12.